Joining us now live from Sydney is Sean Turnell. He's an associate professor in the Department of Economics at Macquarie University. Sean, thank you for joining us tonight. G'day, Michelle. Sean, Australia is struggling with unemployment of 6.4%. To put that in perspective, unemployment was 4% in 2008. There are fewer jobs in the mining and commodities industries, as we just saw in the report. And the minimum wage is 13 13 US dollars 55 cents. That's about double the federal wage floor here in the US. Sean, is it too high? Should the minimum wage be lowered? Well, I don't really think so. Um, the labour market is highly segmented. So it would be true that in some service sector industries, and particular things like restaurants and cafes and things like that, then the minimum wage probably is a bit of a negative. Uh, in that sense. But I think for the rest of the economy, for the economy broadly, Australia's labour market is more about demand. It's more about the slowdown in the economy broadly, coming from things like the you know, fall in resource prices, etc. So I think, in other words, that the uh, minimum wage has a marginal effect. It's not really the main thing. But with a higher minimum wage, does that not perhaps deter employers from hiring more people? Oh, yeah, certainly in some industries, uh, but in most of Australia's industries, they're never really going to be prosperous through low wages. You know, Australia is a fairly rich country with very high uh, costs otherwise, such as real estate and so on. So there's a limit below which wages are really not going to fall. So I think on, on the basis of that, and also when we recognise, of course, that wages also form part of consumer demand, and Australia is a very big mm -hmm. consumer economy, then I think, you know, the, the focus on minimum wages, again, is part of the story but it's not the main story. Well, let's look at the bigger picture. And Australia's economy was one of the very few that avoided a recession after the 2008 global financial crisis. But now it's not looking so robust. We have that slowdown in commodity demand, a slowdown in the growth in China, and they're all taking a toll on the economy. Uh, Sean, let's start off with the reduced demand in commodities. How is that impacting Australia? How dire is the situation? Uh, well, it's had a huge effect. Um, I wouldn't say it's dire, but it certainly had a big effect. Uh, number one, it's had an effect on the profitability, of course, of the mining and resource sector. That, that's number one. And, and those sectors, of course, were booming before and employing a lot of people. So there's a lot of unemployment coming out of that. So that's the number one effect. Number two, though, is the effect on the government. The government was actually get a, getting a lot of tax revenue uh, from the mining and resource sector. So that's really collapsed. So I think for the average Australian, the effect that they've seen from the fall of commodity prices is coming more from the drop in government revenues. And mm -hmm. then the government, of course, has then had to cut spending and think about raising taxes and so on. So it's more of a knock-on effect, if you like, uh, more than the direct it, it, it effect itself. Well, Sean, this all links to Australia's relationship with China, and China's forecast to have a GDP growth of around 7% for 2014, 2015. How is that going to impact the Australian economy? Oh, it's going to impact hugely uh, because, of course, China is Australia's largest trading partner. And not only that, of course, it's been the source of growth here. So anything that happens in China is going to have a big impact here in Australia. And as you said, it's already having an impact. The fact that China is slowing and therefore its demand for resources and energy is slowed along with it has pushed commodity prices down. And that's had the impact that we've mentioned already in terms of Australia's resource sector but also just in terms of broad national income and also in terms of government income. But of course, it's also had another effect, which is having a spillover impact on the economy, and that's through the Australian dollar. Because one of the really interesting things is that the Australian dollar is very much a proxy for commodity prices. It moves almost as one with broad indexes of commodity prices. So as China has slowed, commodity prices have fallen, the Australian dollar right. has fallen along with it, and that's had some implications as well. But, yeah, the overall relationship with China, of course, is a very critical one. Well, Sean, let's quickly, before you wrap up, let's focus on, on the bright side, and that is that uh, after 10 years of negotiations, China and Australia did sign a free trade agreement. Uh, Prime Minister Tony Abbott uh, has called it the most comprehensive agreement that China has concluded with anyone Others calling it the deal of a lifetime for Australia. What impact will this have? 
Well, I think all, all of that assessment is true. Uh, it really was the most extraordinary agreement. You know, we're used to being disappointed in agreements like that, but this one, as Tony Abbott said, was extraordinarily comprehensive. Uh, and if it's implemented in full, which, you know, hopefully it will be, uh, the impact on that on Australia will be enormously positive. Uh, and likewise, I think, on China as well, because one of the really interesting things about our two economies is that they're incredibly complementary. Okay, well, our compliments to you, and thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to have to leave it there. Sean Turnell, Associate Professor in the Department of Economics at Macquarie University.